What's good? It's your boy, Fanon. All right, man, we a couple weeks out from this fight. Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury for the lineal heavyweight championship of the world, the WBC championship of the world, and the, uh, how can I say this? The substantive championship, and I just made that term up, uh, for the WBO, the WBA, and the IBF, and that garbage-ass IBO belt that don't count because Tyson Fury holds all those in reality. So it's the biggest fight in the heavy. It's the biggest fight of the year for the heavyweights. Biggest fight of the year, period, really. And it's coming up on December first. This is the nineteenth, and so I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to pay a little bit more attention to what's being said about it. You know, during the training camps, I don't like to talk, do a whole lot of videos up during the training camp. Try to ramp them up a little bit before the fight, so we can get this conversation going. Uh, but there's one thing that I've been noticing about the talk, the conversations going on about this fight. And that is, there's just been a general uh, amount of, um, man, I want to call it, you know, hateration. I think that's like a 1990s term, but, you know, just a lot of, um, (laughs) especially out of Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua fans trying to crap on both sides of this, trying to crap on both sides of this equation, man. And it's it's not going to work. This is a fight that I'm super excited for. It's a fight for the top, in my opinion, it's a top, it's a fight for the top heavyweight in the world. The and the reason I say that is because of what I mentioned. It's for the WBC championship, it's for the lineal championship. And since Tyson Fury never lost any of the be- the other belts, it's for the substantive champion uh championship of the rest of the belts. And I'm just opposing ch- uh substantive from paper. Um when somebody is a lineal, when somebody gets either stripped or they got their personal problems or whatever, you didn't beat them in the ring. You didn't beat the champ in the ring. And that that is what it is. And Tyson Fury could easily tell and has told Anthony Joshua that he's just holding his belts. Now, it might turn out that if Anthony Joshua fought Tyson Fury and he beat him, then, hey, he could he would it would become a scenario like. Joe Frazier after he beat uh, Muhammad Ali in their first fight where Muhammad Ali was the champion. He got stripped because of what was going on in uh, with his personal, well, actually with his political stance that he took. And during his absence, Joe Frazier won the belt, but Joe Frazier really wasn't the champion until he beat Muhammad Ali. So, you know, we could always, we might wonder what could happen in a, a Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua fight, but it hasn't happened yet. So we do not know, but being the type of dude that the promoter for Anthony Joshua is, Eddie Hearn, uh, you know, he's trashing on the fight every way, shape, or form. And I guess most of the people that have been trashing on the fight, trashing the fight are, you know, the general Eddie Hearn fans uh, that come to comment sections and post videos trying to tra- trying to follow, just follow, you know, follow the breadcrumbs that Eddie Hearn lays out. And so this is the fresh batch of breadcrumbs and I'm quite sure everybody will be talking about (laughs) in the comment sections, repeating Eddie Hearn's line, line for line, pretty much Um, talking about both sides of his neck. But Eddie Hearn is predicting a knockout for Deontay Wilder. But of course, that's because it's just an absolute trash fight. Uh, And so let me go with the goes, go through what he says. He says, I think it's going to be a terrible fight. I think he's going to stink the place out. Uh, Hearn said in reference to Fury, he may he may even win the first couple rounds, but I do think he'll get knocked out. Listen, it's nothing against him. I absolutely admire Tyson Fury for what he's done. This is a this is a guy who had major problems and has completely turned his life around. I have the utmost respect for him. He's not match sharp. He's not match fit. And I think Wilder hits too hard and I think he'll cut him up at some point. Don't get me wrong. Fury's going to frustrate him, grab him, hold him, spin him, push him away, and do it again. And Wilder may be behind a couple uh, of rounds, but eventually he'll get a hold of him. And when he does, I think he'll win the fight. Um, You know, first of all, man, I, God, man, I got to, I love Eddie Hearn's ability to talk out both sides of his neck to insult somebody and compliment them at the same time. But even the compliment that it gives is a backhanded compliment. So for Tyson, for, for Deontay Wilder beating him, it's because Deontay Wilder, because this guy's not match sharp. 
And if he beats him, it's just going to be because he hit, he lands a big punch on him. Uh, but Tyson Fury will win some rounds, but he'll be stinking the place up why he wins the rounds. It's just the dude, <laughs> just complete salt on the dude on the, on the event. And I understand it, man, because it's somebody that's, that swore up and down that the fight was never going to happen. This is the guy that said had all the had all the Eddie Hearn minions uh, saying, when's the fight going to happen? This fight's not going to happen. They're really not going to make this fight. They're not going to make this fight as a way to, you know, as a way to uh, as a way to crap on an event that's not his. Now, if this was Eddie Hearn in the same breath in the same uh, if these guys were fi- signed to Eddie Hearn, oh, this would be the greatest. This would be the greatest fight a- in the history of boxing, you know, <laughs> But since it's not him, it's a trash fight and that may or may not lead as a stepping stone to the real champion who was Anthony Joshua, according to him. But, you know, it is what it is, man. That's Eddie Hearn, man. <laughs> you got you to gotta appreciate him, man. You got to appreciate this dude for his consistent full of shitism uh, and the consistency with, with which he applies himself to that uh, model of talking. But as far as the fight goes, man, I'm amped up. I haven't. I'm amped up about it. I do not know what's going to happen. Uh, I do think something different than a lot of people think, man. It's like most people that are talking about this fight think that the only way that Deontay Wilder can win it is if he uh, knocks out De- uh, Tyson Fury. And I don't see. I don't think that that's the case, man. I don't. Th- now I do agree with Eddie. Some parts of what Eddie Hearn said, man. I don't about him being match match fit and sharp and all that. You know, after abusing your body for years with alcohol and drugs, um, and just being that damn big, right? And you know, the alcohol abusing your body with the alcohol and drugs is one thing, but also toting around all that extra weight for several years. Man, that really does do a that does a job on your joints. It also does a it does a job on your reflexes. And when a guy um, who fight if fights in the same style as Tyson Fury does, um, with the moving, you know, being very agile, moving a lot, to do that for twelve rounds, um, that gets more and more difficult the older the, the older you get. For example, same thing applied for Muhammad Ali. And I think a lot of ways that Tyson Fury, hero, and a guy that he kind of mimics in his, his style to the extent that he can is Muhammad Ali. In the second half of Muhammad Ali's career, that was a lot harder for him to do consistently over the course of a fight. Now, for Muhammad Ali, it was for 12 rounds. For Tyson, I mean, it was for 15 rounds for Muhammad Ali. For Tyson Fury, it's 12 rounds. But, you know, that amount of movement, uh, after you've been out of the ring for a long time, you've allowed your body to balloon up and you're already a very, very big guy. Um, that's tough because it's tough to be that mobile, that mobile and agile when you're six foot nine. But when you're six foot nine and you uh, and you're overweight and you've been overweight and you've been abusing your body, man, all that stuff can can go away. And one of the things that really stood out to me. Well, um, when I was looking at a Muhammad Ali fight or a commentary that Custom Model made when he was watching Muhammad Ali spar, is he said that when Ali, before Ali went into um, into his exile, when he took a step back away from somebody, when he was you, when he was being mobile and he took a step back, he'd just take one step back and he would be he would be you know well out of range of uh, the guy that was trying to hit him. But when he came back, you know, he was just like, when he stepped back, he was a half inch closer. And that little bit, that little bit of reaction, that little bit of movement with just the distance that he could take with one step and the quickness with which he could take that step wound up uh, changing the punch from something that missed, missed clearly to something that grazed him or something that landed. And over the course of the fight, you know, that stuff really added up. But then Muhammad Ali was able to show different aspects to his game. He showed a great chin, right? He showed that he was kind of, you know, he knew how to hold. He knew how to grab and do those type of things. You know, head control like like Barry, um, Barry Robinson talks about, which is interesting to me also because Barry Robinson from A Million Style Boxing is in. I saw him in a picture in camp with with um, Deontay Wilder. So I think you can assume that that. 
Tyson Fury is going to try to grab uh, Deontay Wilder about the back of the head a lot and pull him down and pull him into him and move his head around and move him a lot inside because I just don't think that he's going to I don't think that Tyson Fury is going to be able to move a lot during this fight. And seeing that Barry Robinson was added to his camp and the and the consistency with which Barry Robinson talks about head control, I think you'll see a good amount of that in the fight. Um, but we'll see whether or that whether or not that um, you know that pans out. I of course um, lean towards Deontay Wilder. But I'm a big Tyson Fury fan, man. I believe this dude has the skills. But I don't think it's going to be a trash fight. I think it's going to be a good fight. Um, but I honestly, man, I kind of see this thing in my mind's eye. I see this thing going. I see it going the distance. And I see Deontay Wilder winning by a decision. Anyway, it is what it is. I, I'm looking forward to the fight. Probably be doing more videos about it as, as we get closer to it. And with that, uh, I'm out. Peace.